Yo, it's Shock with DG, and as you can see, today's video is going to be a little different than even my usual tips videos. So, over on my Twitch channel, which I've linked in the description, I got asked daily what I think are the best operators and which ones I think you should be picking for your team. So, today I've put together an operator tier list, and I want to go over each individual operator and why they're in their specific category. But before this video starts, I want to ask everybody who's new around here to consider subscribing. I upload videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. East, and I make test videos as well as highlight videos. Also, I have an announcement at the end of the video, so if you wait, you can hear about that. But now, on to the video. Alright, so let me start by explaining each of the categories I have here. So, to start off, we have Insane. This category is going to be full of the best of the best operators in the game. These are going to be operators that you often see banned in Pro League and also your ranked games. If they aren't getting banned, chances are you're going to be either playing with or against them. So the second category is going to be similar to the first, but think of them only as very slightly worse. So these are going to be your meta operators. So these ops are the ones you're going to most likely be seeing on your team or on the other team. All these operators are going to be a solid choice no matter the map or bomb site. So for the third category, we've got your map specific operators. All these ops here are going to be really good, but only on certain maps. On to the fourth category, we have your situational operators. So these ops will be used very situationally. Um, you'll want to pick these for very specific strats, whether that's on attack or defense. And lastly, we have your uses operators. So these operators will almost never be useful in any way, in any situation. All right, so now that we've got all the categories explained, so let's start with the first one, the Insane tier. So number one, we're going to go ahead and drag, where is he, Thatcher, into the Insane tier. So Thatcher's a great operator in his current state. He has the ability to clear out basically all the defender's utility with a single press of a button. Anything from Jaeger's ADSs to Maestro's Evil Eyes. So this, in my opinion, puts Thatcher in the Insane category. So for the second operator we've got for the insane category, it's got to definitely be Maestro. So Maestro is known for his overpowered gun and also is a very useful gadget. With his low recoil, decent fire rate Alda that has an 80 round mag, you can start to see why Maestro is in this category. Not to mention his gadget, which is bulletproof and can only be destroyed by an explosion or Thatcher or Twitch's gadget. His secondary shotgun pistol and impact grenades are also great for making rotates, opening hatches, or even impact tricking a wall or a hatch. So with all this together, I believe this makes Maestro one of the best operators in Siege and on defense, which makes him in the insane category. So now for Echo, you'll usually see either an Echo or a Maestro band, whether it's in ranked or pro league. One of these two operators are almost always going to get banned. Echo is a great gadget that is a bit more flexible than Maestro's, but is more easily countered as anyone can just see the drone and shoot it if they're really looking for it. But a smart Echo player can get around this and learn to hide their drones and use them in just the last final moments of a round, where it's usually very intense and people don't have as much time to find the drone and look around for it. So It's also got a great primary that you can use to put a NACOG on, unlike Maestro's, which for a lot of people is a huge plus. So not only does he have a great primary, but he also has a great SMG secondary that can be very useful for close range engagements. So now into my favorite attacking operator, which has definitely got to be Sledge. Sledge has an insanely useful gadget that is great for opening up anything from walls, castle barricades, hatches, and even the floor. His kit is one of the best in the game in my opinion, with his very good uh, L85 primary and my favorite gun in the game, uh, the SMG11 secondary. This pair with his nades and seemingly endless destruction with his gadget, for me, puts Sledge in one of the best operators in the game. So we talked about my favorite attacking operator, but now we're going to talk about my favorite defending operator, which has definitely got to be Smoke. So Smoke for me has got to be one of the best operators for defense, with his newly buffed deployable shield that acts as sort of a mini mirror window almost, and his amazing weapons and gadget. I believe Smoke can be ran in almost pretty much any bomb site on any map with no problems. You'll never you never pick smoke and think it's a bad choice. Smoke's always a good choice. So talking about mirror windows, let's take a look at Mira herself. So Mira's gadget is one of the best on defense, which is why she has such a high ban rate. She's very rarely played in Pro League or even ranked because she's so frequently banned. 
Her primary is, is a good gun, but where she really shines, in my opinion, is her primary and secondary gadget, as well as her secondary shotgun. So Mira can make pretty much any bomb site more defendable, um, where they like normally wouldn't be. So for example, Penthouse on Coastline is a good one that people oft often bring up. All right, so on to everyone's favorite operator, Ash. So Ash has flashes, which are great for clearing ADSs, which also allows her to shoot her gadget into the site, clearing any shields, maestro cams, or whatever it may be that she needs to get out of there. She's also very fast and has one of the best guns in the game, making her a favor amongst fraggers and aggressive players. So now on to Sophia. Sophia works very similarly to how Ash does, but she's only very slightly worse. So it's basically the same idea as Ash, where you have two stuns that you can launch into the site to clear ADSs, so that you can remove any shields, maestro cams, or anything else. So again, very similar to Ash. But what Sophia brings different uh, to Ash is her breaching charges, which is her secondary gadget, which can be very useful for maps like Consulate, where the bomb site's in the basement, and you want to go above to destroy the floor. Great operator for that. So Ying, we have to talk about Ying with her new buff. She's definitely in the insane category. She has four candelas and two smokes as of her new buff, meaning she can completely wipe out all of Jaeger's ADSs single-handedly. Um, so that just alone is ridiculous, but that's not even really the worst part about it. We will see more often as someone else clearing the ADSs and maybe the Wumais so that she can completely just smoke off any crossfires and blind an entire room for a ridiculous amount of time. So this with her LMG that is pretty strong is all very overpowered in my opinion and hopefully we see a, a nerf to her pretty soon. Alright, so for the very last operator we've got in the insane category, we're going to have Nomad. So Nomad is basically the best at watching flank without actually watching it. So having the ability to shoot a little charge above a door that make a very loud sound and also throw back and stun whoever walks into it for a few seconds is huge. So this means you and the rest of your team can focus on pushing the site or doing whatever tech you're doing with the knowledge that your flank is being watched. You know, you don't actually have to be watching it. So instead of putting one of your teammates, for example, on the flank to sit there and hold an angle, you can bring him to the front, help push the site and just throw a nomad out of the door behind you and you're good to go. All right. So... That was all the operators for the insane category. So let's go on to the meta category. And to start us off, we're going to be going with Thermite. This should come as no surprise at all, as Thermite is pretty much the best at what he does, and that's just opening a big hole in the reinforced wall. I mean, that's enough said, honestly. So the, s the second here, we're going to talk about someone who can stop Thermite and opening up a wall, and that's going to be Mute. So Mute's going to be in our meta category. Mute is a very good operator right now with his insane kit, which is very similar to Smoke, the shotgun primary and SMG 11 secondary, and also his C4 that you can use for plant denial. So Mute overall, very good operator. But you can't really talk about Mute without Mozzie, it seems these days. So, you know, you've probably heard a lot about the whole mute Mozzie combo. Very strong right now. It seems like all that you hear about from the Pro League scene is that, you know, how the mute Mozzie meta is so overpowered. And they've got a point. You know, he ve they they really are. With a mute Mozzie meta, you can you basically can't drone anything. Mozzie with his gadget that captures drones, and they can get then use for himself. And mute who just completely jams drones. This duo is very in the meta right now, and it's a hot topic within the siege community right now. So another operator caught in some discussion lately is gonna be Goyo. Only about three days ago or so, as of me recording this, did Goyo's gun get nerfed, but even still, he's very, very strong. So with his three shields, I believe it's two shields now, that you can see through as well as shoot at any time to delay the attackers as if it was a smoke grenade from Smoke himself. Goyo is a very strong operator right now. It's 100% in the meta. So let's talk about Wamai and Jaeger. These two operators are great at stopping, you know, projectiles. So got... Jaeger and we've got oh my so these two operators again just very good at stopping the attacks projectiles and can just basically cripple the attack by wasting all of the utility just to get the defenders evil eyes and shields which is th why this combo is so strong so not only can they use up all the attackers throwables but when well, can also stop capital's smoke slash flame bolts which is something Jaeger can't do which is very very strong speaking of capital 
I believe he is also in the meta at the moment with his smoke grenades that aren't stopped by Jaeger's ADSs and his flame bolts that can push out, you know, the defenders. Capitao is definitely a meta pick right now. So now for Jackal. Jackal is great on any map that you want to take map control on and clear out all of the roamers. So his gadget is very simple and effective at doing this. He's also got one of the best guns in the game, as well as with his secondary shotgun for, you know, floor and hatch destruction and smoke grenades for the plant. Jackal is just overall a meta operator and very strong right now. And that's often why I see him banned. We've got to talk about best roamer, Vigil. So Vigil is one of the best roamers right now. He's an operator that doesn't really need to stay alive for very long to be useful, unlike someone like Echo, who needs to stay alive to the very end of the round to use his gadget effectively. So instead, Vigil can just use his two powerful weapons and impact grenades to just run around the map, open rotates, hatches, and just try and frag out and waste the attacker's time. One of my personal favorite operators lately has definitely got to be IQ. IQ is great for finding, well, Vigil, as well as any of the other defender's gadgets, such as Echo, Valkyrie anything like that so makes sure a very useful and meta operator in my opinion so you can't talk about iq without talking about valk so we'll throw valk in there valk is a great operator for getting info and can even be used for plant denial since she's got a c4 so i throw a cam in sight somewhere wait till the end of the round when they go for a plant and just c4 from below so valk overall great info based operator in an info based meta which makes her a meta op currently so now for lesion Legion is overall a very good operator, even after the nerf to his gadget. His mines can slow and even damage the attackers, as well as providing a noise that will alert anyone on the defense to where the attacker is. So, throw in a doorway, wait to hear the sounds, you know an attacker's coming from there. He's also got impacts, which are great for impact tricking or making rotates around the map. So, this means Legion can play very flexibly. He can either stay on sight and just stack his Legion mines for sight, or roam somewhere and you know use his traps to the, his advantage there all right so on the topic of nerfs we've got to talk about buck even with the loss of his nades i still believe buck is a meta op he does what sledge and many others can't which is to go below a bomb site and basically just shred the whole floor above him making it either easy kills for himself or his teammates he's also got a claymore now which i think can help with his flank i guess he can throw it down meaning he won't have to watch his flank as much i suppose um, still kind of sucks he lost his nades, but definitely a meta pick still. Alright, so on to Habana. She has a great gun, flashes, and of course the ability to breach reinforced walls or hatches, which only two other operators are currently able to do. So I think Habana shines the most in getting hatches over the other two hard breachers, as she can get up to three hatches, make her a much better pick for maps like Clubhouse. Alright, so Iana. Iana, we're going to throw in one of the recruits since we don't actually have the icon. But Ayana is going to be very, very good within the comp scene. She basically has infinite drones with her gadget. So that's basically infinite intel, which is really, really good. And she's also got the G36C, which is a very strong gun, as well as her frag nades, which are always great. All right. So lastly, for the meta operators, we've got Maverick. So Mav is, Mav is so flexible in what he can do. And with the recent addition of frag grenades to his kit, he's 100% in the meta. Also, a huge bonus to him that he has basically no counters at all besides just killing him, which is very different from the other two hard breachers in the game. Okay, so now that we've gotten the insane and meta operators out of the way, it's time to talk about the map-specific ops. So let's start with Cade. Cade is great on maps like Bank or Clubhouse which has a bunch of hatches that you're going to want to have to stay closed. He's really the only one that can consistently keep hatches closed, making him the best for maps with lots of hatches. Talking about Clubhouse, another great operator for a map like Club is definitely got to be Bandit. Bandit is great at bandit tricking walls, such as the CCTV wall on Club. So for any maps where you can bandit trick easily, he's going to be a great choice. So I'm going to bring up Clubhouse here a lot as it's such a good example for all of these operators so pulse is another one of those operators that are really really good on a map like clubhouse or bank any map where you can deny the plant from below or you need cons constant info where you can play safely such as bank basement pulse is going to be a great pick all right so now monty again another good operator on maps such as bank and clubhouse where you just want to basically brute force your way through an area so for example, garage on clubhouse or bank if you just want to take map control. Bank's a huge map. It takes a long time to drone. If Jackal's banned, which he normally is on a map like bank, 
a, a great way to just clear the map, take Montane, and just walk around with your teammates behind you, and just have them, you know, basically face check everything. So this makes Monty like great on maps like that. Oryx is definitely very map specific, which we do not have Oryx's icon, so we're gonna throw him in there. But he's gonna be very good on maps such as Cafe, where you can use his gadget to basically destroy all of the bar on that top floor um, and he doesn't lose any of his HP which makes him great for that site but not really on any other map so great for cafe not really great for anything else lastly in our map specific lineup here we're going to bring on alibi alibi is going to be great for maps like consulate where there's lots of windows and people tend to repel more so you can throw her holograms under the windows and it'll get in the way of anyone having a clear view into that room also, people like to repel, spray through the window, they're going to get detected. So just overall, she's very good for maps with lots of windows. All right, so now onto our second to last category, the situational operators. These ops are going to be best for certain strats, but you aren't going to always want to pick them. So since we're just talking about console and windows, I think Blackbeard and Castle would be great examples here. So we'll go ahead and throw them in. So this is a map where you would want to bring out these two ops. So Blackbeard is great for any map with lots of windows since he can head glitch on the window and just with his face shield and just kind of sit there, get free kills. And Castle is great for barricading up all of those windows. The reason they're not in the map specific lineup though is because you can kind of bring them on any map. Um, it doesn't have to be just a map like Consulate with lots of windows, but uh, that is just a good example. So Clash is great for maps like Border. So we'll throw her in there. Clash is great where there's basically a, an external wall that is very difficult to keep closed. So for example, border, as I said, that outside armory wall, you basically can't bandit trick it. They can go below, they can nade you off. It's so easy to get banded off that wall. So it's Clash is really good at just basically standing there and slowing everybody down. So where you've got walls like that, Clash is great. Another operator that is useful only sometimes is going to be Warden. So Warden is really good at holding like staircases or a small room such as the server stairs on bank. Since all he, since he can't really get flashed, um, he can basically just sit there with the shotgun, be immune to flash grenades, and hold down staircases. Um, so very situational. Alright, so now for Twitch. Twitch is a great pick. So if like Thatcher's banned, you can pick Twitch. That way you can counter the Maestro. A lot of teams will ban, say like Thatcher Echo. You that means Maestro's up, so you need to counter those Maestro camps somehow. Twitch is a really good operator for that. Shock the Maestros. You can have your teammate shoot it. You can shock it. Um, just destroy it. That way you don't have to rely on you know Zofia, Ash, or Thatcher. All right, so now let's talk about traps. So we're gonna bring in Frost, Capkin, and Ella. So they all have their place, but they're all used for pretty different reasons usually. So Capkin's a good pick to try and catch the attackers off guard. Maybe you pick him, you know, halfway into the game. They don't really expect it. They haven't been seeing any Capkin traps, so they don't really check for them. Um, Great for that. Maybe get a free pick or at least do some good damage. Um, while Frost is more used for maps, maybe like Outback and Ranked, where it usually comes down in the last few seconds and just tons of windows. So basically, you just put the Frost match on the windows, wait till the last 20 seconds when the attackers are going to push, and now they have to look at the floor to shoot a uh, Frost mat, or you they just die, basically. So she's very good at that. And Ella is used more so for holding down like smaller rooms or staircases. Um, more so staircases because she can bring herself a shield. And she's got a really good shotgun that she can bring. And she can just hold down uh, any any sort of staircase with her shield and her shotgun. And place her element mines there. Overall really good for that. Alright so a good operator to take for the roam uh, is going to be Gridlock. So Gridlock's a great pick for trying to counter the flank or trying to lock in roamers from rotating is easy so she's basically got a shotgun and smokes which can be really good for floor destruction or hatch destruction and of course the smokes can be used for the plant 
So this being said, she still isn't as good as Nomad because her gadget just isn't as good. Um, but she still is, she's always her place. So now we're going to talk about Nock. So Nock is great for a map like Bank where you can use your gadget to sneak by the Evil Eyes or Echo Drones or whatever it may be to get into somewhere like Garage undetected. Um, but she really isn't too useful outside of that. Um, so that's why she's kind of in the situational lineup here. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Lion and Dokubi. So these are both two really good operators for when you want to clear roamers, but can also be used for a site execute. But usually you'd want to take some other operators that are more useful, making them very situational, putting them in this category. Alright, so for the very last operator in the situational tier, we've got Doc. So Doc can be great for specific sites where you need to go hold longer angles with his ACOG. Um, a good example of this would be on Bank at the top of the Spiral Stairs, which is often called Kanto. You can usually just put like a shield there, give himself a bulletproof camera, maybe some ADSs, and he can just sit on his cam there and hold down that long angle in the hallway with his ACOG, heal himself from nades or anything like that. But there's usually more useful operators that bring a little more utility, making him pretty situational. Alright, so if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you sticking around and watching. I know it's kind of a longer one, but we're going to get through it. So this will be our last tier, which I've called useless. So these are the operators that just don't really have anything that makes them stand out or makes them worth picking over any of the other operators that we've talked about here today. So I won't go into much detail on these as it's pretty straightforward and self-explanatory why these operators are here. But for the last few ops, we just have, you know, the Chanka, we've got Fuse, Finca, Cav, Glaz, Kali, Blitz, and Amaru. And finally, Rook. So all of these ops, as I said, just don't really bring anything that useful. And there's usually another operator you'd want instead. Um, so they're pretty much useless. They can be picked and ranked sometimes uh, for certain things, but really outside of ranked, if we're talking like pro league or just like comp, they're really pretty useless. So that's been my operator tier list. If you disagree with any of my choices, be sure to let me know in the comments and we can discuss why. If you remember from the beginning of the video, I said I had an announcement to make and I do. So I'm very happy to announce that I've been sponsored by a company named Sleevies. So these guys make great arm sleeves designed to reduce friction from your arm to your mouse pad, give you increased accuracy and consistency with your flicks and overall aim, all at a very low price. Um, so if you follow the link in the description, it'll be the first link there. You can get 10% off your next purchase of your very own sleeves using my discount code, just shock. Um, anyways, this will be all for me today. I hope everyone enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.